let's take a look at our top selections. Hi, everybody. Dan Omen, Mike Beer, the feature race at Aqueduct on Saturday is race number four. It's the kickoff leg of a mandatory payout in the 20 cent Empire Pick Six. Let's throw up the field for the grade three toboggan going on uh, seven eighths of a mile. $150,000 is the person. Mike, we've got several horses coming out of the Gravesend Stakes. It was a short field, there wasn't a lot of pace. The one Pete's play call took advantage. As we take a look at the time form US pace projector for the toboggan, Short field, blue bar situation, maybe not a lot of pace again, perhaps a repeat scenario. It really looks like it, that could be the case here, Dan, a short field without a lot of pace in here. Um, to me, the key to the race is the three um, share the ride, a horse who has plenty of early speed to make the lead if they want it. In his most recent starts, his last three starts, they've decided that they want him to track paces. I feel like that might be a mistake in a race like this. They should probably put that horse on the lead. Do you think they're going to be concerned about the seven? I know that he has had good success at six, and he's probably very capable at seven, but do you think that's in the back of their mind and maybe one of the reasons why they won't use that speed to try to save something for the final furlong? I mean, it's certainly possible. He did um, win a seven furlong race at Parks uh, back in November. That was an allowance race um, against an overmatched field. It feels like it, it's supposed to be harder for him to win going seven against these horses. Um, but man, when you have the kind of speed he has in a race like this, you're supposed to use it. Pete's play call, the number one's just a cool eight-year-old. He won for the 14th time in his career off the Rudy Rodriguez claim last time out in the Gravesend. Let's watch that race. We mentioned there wasn't a lot of pace. Takes over at the top of the lane. He caught a wet track that he adores, and he's able to hold off the late kick of Stan the Man, the five on the outside, drafted the two as the gray. Perhaps those two horses were compromised a bit by the lack of pace. Yeah, and they probably were. Stan the man, you can see the five there. He's railing down the outside there. I felt like he had a lot of momentum and upper stretch, Dan, but he actually doesn't even make it that close in here. Um, Pete's play call had to jump on him, um, and he you know, just sprinted home to the wire there to win yet again. Uh, he was off the Rudy claim there, but this horse runs for anybody. He's a really, really cool horse. Maybe drafted is slowly rounding his way back into form. He was a group three winner, multiple group three winner in Dubai in 2019. This is his third start off of a lengthy layoff, perhaps compromised by the pace last time out. Cheek pieces on. I mean, I guess they got to try something different, right? I don't know. He was compromised by pace in the fall high weight. He was compromised by pace last time in the Gravesend. He's one of those, you know, closers that likes to sit back and make one run. And it feels like this race isn't going to set up well for him either. Let's watch Share the Rides victory. Two starts back, lugging 133 pounds in the grade three fall high weight. He got right up close to the pace in this race, sitting just off the early leader, Tribeca. He's going to gut it out on the outside to win it over a rallying stand, the man. Now, after this race, he showed up at Laurel two weeks ago in the fire plug stakes. He raced with the bar shoe. He sat off the pace. He got a big split turning for home, and it looked like he was on his way to victory only to be run down late. The bar shoe comes off for this race. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what he does. I, I, Your concerns about the seven furlongs, Dan, that you brought up earlier are, are sort of well taken with him, um, especially when you go back to that bold ruler uh, at Belmont last October. I mean, that was a race. He got a triple digit buyer that day. Um, but man, he absolutely crawled on a slow pace in there and still couldn't hold on at the end. Um, so maybe that's what they're worried about with this horse. I feel like they got to use his speed here. He's been in really good form since they claimed him. Um, a multiple stakes winner now, three triple digit buyers on his card. They have to put this horse on the lead. Stan, the man's run too well in his last five races to only have one win. And that was in the tail of the cat. I mean, in the true north, he caught Forense Fire. He ran his heart out in that race. Forense Fire is a better horse than he is. He caught Complexity and uh, Code of Honor in the Kelso. He's not going to beat those two horses. And then he was pace compromised in the fall, high weight and graves. And if there is a little bit more hitting this time around, this horse figures. He's in very good form for a very good trainer. I agree. He, he makes a ton of sense in this race. Dan. The, to me, the surprising thing about his last two races, and I will say this as someone who's who bet him in both of those races, is um, he was just so far back early for some reason because he's he really hasn't been that kind of horse throughout his career. That true north that you mentioned is a case in point um, where he kept right up close in there and got gunned down late by Forenze Fire. For whatever reason, he's been too far away in his last two races, and it's cost him. 
horse seeking his 10th lifetime win as the five, American Power, who's riding the wave of a two-race win streak, both with solid buyers, for Abatris. Let's watch his optional claiming score last time out. He went right to the front. He's facing pressure when they turn into the stretch. He repels all challengers. He goes on to win. And his stablemate, the one little commissioner, came back to win a 3x optional with a 97 buyer, validating this race for sure. Yeah, I thought he ran well in here, Dan, uh, because they did put him on the lead and they did come after him around the turn there. He had to put away a couple of challengers early on in there. He he managed to do that. And you can see him um, keeping clear all through the stretch. He ran well in this race. Um, this is the kind of horse who's never really been a stakes horse, um, but he's been a good horse for a long time. And he's always been... Um, it's very interesting because he's always been a closing sprinter, but since Atras claimed him, he's somehow gotten speed into this horse. His last two starts, he kept right up close. That could really um, benefit him if they ride him like that in this race. Now, one of his advantages in this field is his affinity for the seven eighths of a mile. That could be key. Let's take a look at our top selections for the grade three toboggan. I think share the ride if he runs his best race is too good for these horses. And I think he might be able to get the jump from just off the pace. You're going with the upside. American power might be the now horse. Yeah, I, I didn't really want to knock the two favorites in here, Dan, but I also didn't really want to bet them. I personally feel like Stan the man might be the best horse in the race. Um, I just didn't really want to bet him again. I've bet him a few times recently and haven't gotten the money with him. So I'm just going to take a little shot here and hope that American power is improved enough to go with these horses. Five, four, three, and one for Mike. Three, five, one, and two for me. It's the grade three toboggan race forward aqueduct on Saturday. Good luck.